This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on October the 5th, 2015. Enjoy it! Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, we're not going to wait for any more stragglers. It's uh, 1 o'clock and it's time to go. Today, we're going to stick with this basics themes that I've been on now for almost a month. And we're going to talk about the basics of printing. Um, you can do all kinds of weird and fancy things with your printer. But if you don't get the basics down, you'll never get to those fancy things. So. The first thing we have to talk about is how do you load a new printer on your computer. In most cases, if you buy a brand new printer, you start up your computer, um, you can do it two ways. If you get a disk for your, for your new printer, put that disk in, uh, um, in your computer, start it up, and let it run through its process. When it's time to actually hook the printer into the computer, it'll tell you, time to hook me up. And from there, it will uh, load the rest of the programming it needs to work. The second way to do it um, is to just simply turn the printer on and plug it into your computer and Windows 8, Windows 7, Windows 10 is really good about this. If there is a print driver out there for your printer, it will download it and install it like that. It may take a minute or two, it's not really snappy snap, but it'll install your printer as this one did. I, just, I had never had this printer hooked up to this computer. On my desk this morning, I just simply plugged it in and waited for the drivers to download and install themselves, and there it is. HP 1018 LaserJet printer. So, once the print drivers are installed, uh, you can, um, as, it's, as it's installing, the last thing it's going to do is it's going to ask you, do you want to print a test page? And you always print a test page um, to make sure that everything that number one you have actually physically set the printer up correctly you've put the ink in and you've taken off all of the packing materials and all of that stuff um, and um, if it doesn't print then start looking around and going through your little booklet to make sure you did every step of installing the ink cartridges taking off the packing materials because there's there's uh, pieces of tape down inside the, the printer to hold things steady while it's shipping, all of that stuff. If you're not sure about any of that, I'm a phone call away. Okay, so what we want to do is we always want to print a test page. And we'll do that right now. Action. It's starting to print. And here comes our printed test page. You want to make sure, this is a uh, black and white printer, by the way, so it's going to print in grayscale, all of the things. But you just want to make sure that the, uh, the print job is clean. There's no, there's no lines in it. There's no missing characters and all of that. You just want to make sure it's clean. Now, if you have several kinds of printer on your computer, and some people do, some people have um, a couple of inkjet printers. Um, one of them may be um, uh, a network printer and another one just attached to your computer. But figure out 
which printer you've just done do you want to make the default printer? And that's important in this case because um, Windows 10 also has a PDF printer, which is a, a pseudo printer. Okay, it will take a document and it will convert it to a PDF, a portable document format uh, as a file. It'll make that conversion for you so you can send it to other people through email and, and however you want to do it. But um, if you have no other printer on your system, the print to PDF will be the default printer that everything wants to print to. What you need to do is make sure that the printer that you want to use all of the time is the default printer with the green check mark. And this will be the same on all on all computers. And to make sure it is that if you if you see the green check mark, um, on something else other than the printer you just installed, you can click on the printer you just installed, highlight it, right click, and you will see as as part of the contextual menu that you just context right click, contextual menu, um, set as default printer. Okay, and you want to make sure that that's done, that you have a green check mark on the printer you want to use all the time. When we go to print a document, you'll see why that's important. Yeah, uh, it 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 uh, took the green check mark off of that and put it over here. It it was a little slow in doing it, but it did do it. Okay. All right, so when we print a document, you're going to see that that's, that's an important consideration of making sure you have the right printer um, as the default printer. Now, if we right click again on the printer and we go to print properties, we can see some things about the printer um, that will be helpful. As I said before, we, we can print a test page. If you're not sure your printer's working, try a test page. If you get no action, do not keep hitting that button. Print, 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 print. Because we'll talk about the print queue in a minute, but there's a bad job stuck in there. And every time you hit that print button, you'll put another job in behind it. Eventually, when you clear the problem, it will print 20 test pages. <laughs> okay, we'll get to that when we talk about the print queue. But um, so you can print a test page. You can see what the name of your printer is, and you can even change the name if you like. You can change it to Bob's printer if you like, just as long as the computer can see it, or kitchen printer, or whatever. You. Uh, right click, you right click on the highlighted printer, right click, and you go to printer properties. Okay? And you get that page up. And so it, it gives you a lot of information about your printer. Now, um, one of the things that it does is it tells you what paper is available in your printer to be printed on. If you have two trays for regular paper and for 14 long paper, it will tell you. You'll have letter and legal. Or if you have two trays and one is letter and one is envelope, it will tell you. You have letter paper, you have on the envelope tray. Okay. So some printers have two trays, which you can put different kinds of paper in, different lengths. Um, across the top, you'll see these tabs across the top. Um, in your case, um, don't mess with them. Uh, this is how you share a printer on the network. Please don't do that. <laughs> don't click on share. Uh, this just tells you what, how the printer set itself up on your computer. It used a virtual printer port 
is don't mess with that. Um, some advanced settings here. Um, the, really, the, there's nothing here that you need to mess with, except maybe if you are printing photographs on a good quality photo printer. Now let us just say that they're coming out a little muddy or a little dark or, or blown out with white light or whatever. Um, a lot of times in the color management you can correct these problems a little bit but it's you're going to go through a lot of ink and a lot of heartache trying to fix it. Uh, if you want a really good print job, take it to Black's. Um, and I think Black's is dead now, aren't they? Yeah, well, they're on their way out. Um, so the, there are things here that you can change, but I don't recommend it for you home gamers. Just, you know, leave everything as is. You're using your printer mainly to print documents. If you have a photo printer, there's software that came with your printer to help you do photographs, okay? To help you do photographs in a better job. Um, so manipulate the printer in the software for photographs, not the, hard, the, the software for the printer hardware, okay? Use, the, use the, the software that came with your printer to do that for photographs. Okay, so we've closed that out, and I'm going to close this out now. And I am simply going to print a web page. We'll print the Google page. And here it comes. Now, the one thing you'll see in Google Chrome, the one thing you won't see, is a print button. Where is it? It's not there. It's not there. Way off to the side, you see the three little lines to the contextual menu over there. The three little lines. Okay. Let me finish. The three little lines. And you want to find print. And it will bring up a secondary page of the job that you're going to do. So it's telling you you're going to print the Google job. And it has a print button. But here's the next place I want you to look very, very carefully. See this little change button here? It says change right there. Right beside it is the word destination. Where are we going to send this print job? Because I have not configured Google Chrome to print properly yet, it went to the old default printer. And in this case, it was the Microsoft XPS document printer. That's just simply printing to a file. Okay? You want to click on that change button right there. And you'll see that it's giving you a list of printers that you can um, It's not there. What are we doing? It's not there. Let me go back here. Uh, recent destinations to 1600. No, I want the 1018. Show all total. There it is. Okay, I eventually found it, but I found the printer that I was looking for and clicked on it, and I put it here HP LaserJet 1018. That's this printer. Okay. But what I had to do was I had to go to that change button. I'm going to go back to what it was. 
okay? It was the Microsoft XPS document. That's wrong. It's printing to a file. So I had to change it, click on the change button, and I, in this case, I had to go searching for it. It turns out that it was uh, down at the bottom uh, um, of the uh, of the panel where it said show all. So I'm going to click on show all and scroll down even more. And um, there it is, the HP 1018 printer. Click on that and it changes it over to the HP LaserJet 1018. That may be why your printer is not printing, okay? Um, especially if you're printing from Google Chrome. Okay, yeah, okay. So um, if you need to go through this part of the video two or three times, go through it two or three times. All right, so at this, at this point, I'm going to try and print this document. Now, the other part of it here is it gives you options for layout, how the printer is going to print the document on the paper. Is it, in this case, all I want is I know that there's only the one page, one page, and you know, always have a look at these. There's one page, so I can get away with printing all, there's only one, for one copy, in portrait, long ways, and if I want two-sided, I have to do something later. But we never do two-sided unless you're making a book. Okay, so leave that alone. Uh, there are more settings, but um, there are more settings. Um, for a web page, if you click on headers and footers, down at the bottom, the, the very bottom of the page, it will fill in the website address that you're printing as a footer. When you print a web page, it will print the address of the page of the place you got the page from. Okay? You can uncheck that and it won't print a footer and uh, it may not print a header either. Uh, uh, bah, 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 bah. It's uh, also saying page one of one down at the bottom. Okay, so um, in this case, we're just gonna print and it's gonna send that puppy off to the printer. Yeah, yeah, did it all stay colored? Now we got to figure out why it did not print. <laughs> because it didn't. Um, let's see here. We have. Did you print? I didn't. I think I did, but now we're going to now we're going to. Um, yeah. Okay, now um, I'm going to go back into printers and devices and I'm going to double click on the printer that, I, that I'm sending the job to and instead of opening up the preferences and, and the properties of the printer, if I double click on it, it opens the print queue. Left or right? Left click. It opens the print queue. That tells me if there's any documents in the printer. And it says, no, there are none. Well, okay. Let me just uh, close out of that and see if it sent it. No, it didn't send it to XPS either, or PDF and it didn't send it to XPS, so I don't know where it went. <laughs> I don't know where it went. We can try it one more time. Um, 
I think maybe I'd better print. And it's giving me the right... Oh, it says it's offline. Yeah, it says it's offline. That's what's wrong. Yeah, it did, but it's it's saying it's offline. Um, so, in that event, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of there and see if I can get it to print um, from... Ah, see if I can get it to print from Firefox. Okay, we'll try this. Where do I want it to print? File, print. Okay, it's brought up a print dialog box that we're more used to seeing rather than that, that Chrome one. Um, and so it has brought up the default printer, the LaserJet 1018, and it says it's going to print all of one page for one copy. And at this point, it says, by the way, that the status is ready. I don't know why the other one said it was offline, but this one says it's ready. So if I click OK, it should print. <laughs> and does anybody know why it didn't print the Google? Nope. Nope. Yeah, or, or if it, Google was there, it wouldn't print the Google either. No. Let's go back and look under the properties. Um, no. Um, what we want to do is we want to find the um, the setting in this to print background. Remember years ago, you would print your you could print your your uh, MSN screen, and if you had a color printer, it would print all of the blue. The whole thing would be blue for like six pages. Okay, waste of ink. But if we want to print the backgrounds, um, uh, let me just look for it here. Finishing effects. All paper and quality. Yeah. It's in here somewhere. I know it is. <laughs> um, anyway, if you look around for it, it will, there, there should be an entry in there for print background, and that's when it will print the Google. But if you, um, if you get, if you want to print uh, a web page, that the background of the web page is, is, um, is some kind of um, fancy schmancy, a quilted look or something like that, okay? You print that page, it doesn't print that part, it only prints the text. Okay, and that's the way it should be. All you want to print is the text. You don't want to print all the fancy schmancy. 
just the text. And most modern printers do that now. Why does this keep going back to facts? Changing. I'm going to cancel out of that. This this mouse is too sensitive to be doing that kind of thing. Anyway, that's why um, you're getting uh, you're not getting some pieces of the job. It didn't print the Firefox. And if it was Google up, it wouldn't print the Google. It only prints the text. Okay. When you go to print a document, um, of course, it's only going to print what's on the document. If you have a picture in the document, it will print that as well. Okay. So don't get stuck on it will only print text. It prints the entire document, but it doesn't print a background. And that's what we're talking about here. This is, in fact, a piece of the background of the web page. Okay. All right. Printing basics. Let's um, get into. How to cancel Yes, how to cancel a job. Good thing. It can be a problem sometimes. I'm going to open this uh, PDF document here, and uh, we'll see if we can make that print. Now, it says there are three, it, when you open this up and you look at it carefully, under the menu it says um, that there are three pages to this document. One of three, there'll be two of three, three of three, Okay. Um, and there is your, your printer icon. It's also under file. Uh, there are some other things that you can do with the document. But let us just say that there's something wrong with the job after you hit print. And I'm going to simply make something wrong with the job by unplugging the printer. Oh, uh, getting pictures off your camera. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll get to some, some of the camera stuff. Camera stuff, here again, there are basics to doing camera stuff. So in a few weeks, maybe we'll do basics on cameras. Okay? And we'll get to that. I'll keep that. But what I've done is I've disabled the printer now so that if I send a print job to it, it will be like it's a damaged print job. Okay? So how do you get rid of a damaged print job? You're right, it's the print queue. It's the print queue that does it for you. So I'm going to go ahead and say print the job. OK? And uh, I'm going to choose the right printer, or 1018. And it's going to show me um, that I, I have pages um, 1 to 3 if I print them all. I can, if I click on pages, I can say print page one, uh, one comma two, and it will print page one and two and not do three. Or uh, I can do current page. So I don't want one and three. What I can do, let me just go back here, is I can go to the second page. I can say print. And if I click on current page, it's going to print only the page that I was looking at. If it's page two, it won't pr print page one and three. Or if it's a 50 page document and I'm on page 23, it will only print page 23. Current page, okay? So let's, but let's go back and print them all. 
And at this point, I'm going to, just for the sake of argument, I'm going to say, okay, go ahead and print the job. And it sent the job off to the print queue. Now, if you look carefully down here in the lower right, you'll see a little tiny printer in the taskbar here. That is um, an icon for the print queue. Well, uh, by the way, print queue, what does that really mean? Okay, what do you do when you queue up for something? It's the lineup. Okay, it's the lineup of the jobs. Okay, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to go back to the print queue and I'm going to click on this or double click on it or right click on it, whatever it'll do and open devices and printers and I'm going to double click on the printer and it is showing me that there is no job in it. <laughs> but if there was something wrong with the job, the job would be here in the print queue. And then you can click on the job, highlight it, and you can go to document, and you can pause the job, you can restart it, or you can cancel it. And what you want to do is cancel the job. If there's something wrong with it, uh, the computer didn't know how to make the job go. So, Oh, why did that do that? Okay, so the job is not anywhere else. Now, if I plug this back in again, it should start to print. Let's say I've solved, I've solved my problem with my printer. It should start to print. Plug it back in again. There it is. The job went off into the ether somewhere. Let's print it again. Oh, it's sending sending it to fax, that's why. That's why I sent it to fax. I'll have to work on that. Anywho, you can see how complicated it can get. Um, but in your case, I'm pretty sure that the document is going to the XPS document printer. Look very, very carefully at that and make sure it's going to actually what your printer name is. Um, anything else here that we need to talk about printing a job? Um, yes, it should do. It should find the driver on the internet for that printer, download the driver, and um, and install it in devices and printers in your control panel. Devices and printers. If you click on that after a few minutes, you should find your printer there with a check mark against it. Okay, you should find it there. Um, what does it want to do? Adobe Reader. Um, okay, so uh, now 
If you had a bunch of software that came with your printer to print photographs and stuff like that, okay, uh, then you would load you would load that disk into your computer, get the computer running the disk, and then wait for it to tell you it's time to plug in the printer because it's going to load all of this other stuff with it. Yeah, if you get another printer, it should start like that. Um, okay, where can we take this now? Um, printing a web page, printing a document, um, printing a picture. Let's see if I can find something here. There are some basics to printing pictures. Take a second to load this. There's James sleeping away. And there's the class sleeping away. Um, but I think we can print this. Yes, I can print this. If I click on print, it should bring up a dialog box asking me what I want to print to. And by default, it changed to the XPS document printer. Well, I don't want to do that. I want to have it as the laser printer. So it's going to give me one copy in portrait. And uh, I'm going to change the color mode to monochrome. Just so that it prints. Let's see if it prints. And it should print now. Will it print on the paper? Yes, it, it should just go ahead and print on it. Um, print. It keeps going back to the XPS document printer. Color mode. And there should be a button here somewhere. I say print, and there is the print button. Let's see if it will print it. I don't think I'm getting anywhere. Nope, yes, I am. And it's printed it in black and white monochrome. Okay. So these are the basics of printing. Um, you have to look carefully at when that print dialog box comes up. What is it printing to? Because you have three or four options. What paper is it printing to? Because you'll have a bunch of options. Um, in this case, um, no. Um, if you could tell it to print to email, what it should do is it should resize the photograph from two megs down to 680 kilobytes, okay? It should cut it in half, uh, at least a quarter for file size. That way the, the, the server for the email is not gonna bounce it because it's too big, okay? Um, in, um, if I right click on this and I click, go down here to, in my contextual menu, right click, and I go to send to, there is a, an entry there for mail recipient. Now, if you're using local email, like Windows Live Mail, 
Windows Thunderbird Mail, or any other local client, it will prepare that it will prepare that picture to be sent in email. It'll it'll uh, make the file size smaller so that the email server doesn't bounce it because the attachment is too big. Okay. So that's just, that's just a little bit about email. We're going to do the basics of email next week. Back to basics. Um, is there anything else here uh, that you're a little bit confused about in basic printing? Let's get some questions going. Yes. Um, I'm just wondering if I'm going to replace um, printers. Yeah. Um, if I need to. Okay, that's entirely up to you. Um, as far as the uh, brands go, um, I am an Epson fan. I like Epson printers. I'm not really enamored of HP printers. I think that the software for them is too bulky and it just jumps down inside your computer and will not let it go. If it takes you a half an hour to load the software for your printer, it's doing way too much stuff to your computer. It should take like 10 minutes. And Epson does that. Yes? Isn't there a difference between the technique of HP and Epson? Because I chose yeah. HP and went for yeah. it. I hated it. And somebody helped me understand part of it was the type of ink. Well, it's uh, not so much the, the type of ink. Is, is the, the ink cartridges are proprietary to the manufacturer. There, there could very well be uh, a difference in the formulation of the ink. Yeah. Okay, where was I? Well. Yes, there is. Yeah, and that's and that's part of what makes it proprietary because um, you can go to third-party vendors and get inks that will run in an HP, but the formulation may be a little bit off, and so the color's not going to be right, or uh, for some reason or other, it might clog the ink jets. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah, the Epson is fine. Um, the other printers that you can go with um, um, are a little more expensive. Um, look, you shouldn't be, for a home user, you home gamers, you shouldn't be paying much more than 100 bucks for a printer. It's the ink. I've said this before. If you take an ink cartridge, and dump it out in a gallon bucket, okay? And another one and dump it out in a gallon bucket. Do you know how much money you will go through to get a gallon of ink? Pretty close. Printer ink is $8,000 a gallon. And you thought that gas prices were nuts. If you do that, if you dump it out into a gallon bucket, you will go through $8,000 to get a gallon of ink. That's, they give away the printers. It's like your razor, okay? They'll give you a razor. Don't try and buy any blades for it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yes, exactly so. Um, yeah, exactly so. Um, back to printer basics. Um, 
the basic way to hook up a printer is with a USB cable. Yeah. Well, when you go to make, uh, tell the computer how to make the connection, wireless, USB cable, or Ethernet cable, because they all do, they do all three, you have to make sure that you're telling it to do USB. Yeah, you can, you can buy a cable that's 10 feet long, or you can buy an extension. Yeah, 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 that's a, a USB hub. But um, what you want to do uh, for you home gamers is USB. Kathy is right. If you, often as not, no. Yeah, often as not, no. But Kathy is right. Doing wireless printing for your home gamers is a veil of tears. Okay? I know what I'm doing. It took me four months to hook up my HP printer wirelessly so that it was stable. It took me four months. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so here you go. That's that's printer hookups. Canon Canons are not bad printers. Yeah. Well, it's wirelessly. Let's not go there. Yeah. Yeah. Wireless printing is a veil of tears. If you can get away with using a USB cable, please do that because it will be so much better for you. An Ethernet one, it hooks up with a cable like that to a network, okay, to a network. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a, it, it will plug into a, a router or a switch and then the computer can send its commands th uh, over an internet cable, okay. It's not going out to the internet, it's staying local to you but it is an internet cable, ethernet. That's what they're using. Um, okay, anything else we should talk about here in the way of um, problems that you might be having with printing? Everybody's got them. Don't be shy. Um, Can I ask you something else? Yes. Yes. How can I do that on Windows 10? How can you do that in Windows 10? An excellent question. Okay. Um, down in your taskbar is your file explorer down here. Okay. If you click on that and open it up, It will give, give you um, all of the files that are available on your computer. And in this case, it's doing it through what's called quick access. But you'll notice that there is an entry for this PC. Over here on the right, an entry for this PC. And you click on that. And if, if you have other drives hooked up to the computer, a thumb drive or uh, a backup drive or something, uh, under this, this PC, you will see all of those drives. If you plug a camera into your computer, it will show up here as a drive that you can navigate to the drive and then to the pictures on the camera. It just shows up as any other drive. Um, yes, you can. So let's just for the sake of argument, we'll we'll say that the C drive is an E drive. We'll just say that, and we'll double click, and it opens up all of the folders on the drive, and you can navigate through them. I can go to my user folder here. Uh, I can go to me, the owner, and there's all my stuff. Okay. Yeah, but that is the way to do it, to, to get to 
um, the files and folders that are on your computer or attached to your computer in Windows 10. You just simply need to go to the taskbar down here and click on the file explorer and it will open up. Now, what it's doing here uh, in Windows 10 is it's going back to some of the stuff that I used most recently, quick access, okay? But off on the, off on the left here is where I really wanna go. Because if I make a download from a web page, it's going to go to downloads, okay? It's going to go to downloads. So off to the left here is where to get this stuff. If I throw something into my documents really quickly, I want to be able to get to my documents really quickly. It's all here, okay? And if I go to my documents, um, I should see my music and my pictures and my videos as I would under my user folder, okay? And my user folder has the same thing. It has my documents, and if I click on, onto my documents, it will have all of my pictures and my music and everything. Okay. Yeah, I use Kindle. I do a whole bunch of small programs where you put a graphic instructions or whatnot. Yeah. And I was trying to check. I mean, I had them here. I was trying to check. I think the one that the load of the Windows 10, you know, took it in and that just sat there, and I couldn't tell whether it loaded or whether it didn't. Or Um, where were we? Oh, um, if you open things up uh, in your user folder and you're trying to find something, uh, let us just say for the sake of argument in documents. Um, and Uh, in this case, yes, it shows me something that the computer can open. And it's this um, welcome scan right here, .jpg. .jpg. If it shows you a, um, a view under view under view, if it shows if it shows you an icon, um, of a, pro a program icon, that means that the computer has figured out how to open the document. In this case, it's a picture, so it's going to open it with a picture viewer. If it was, um, in this case, a PDF document right here, it has the PDF icon. It knows how to open it. But um, if it doesn't know how to open the document, um, this icon will be sort of blank and it won't tell you very much, okay? It doesn't know how to open it. You're going to find a program to open it. But in most cases, Windows 10 will open just about everything, just about everything, except if maybe if you've made a document in Word or Excel and it's a docx format, it may not open it, okay? Just about everything will open in Windows 10. You may not be able to do anything with it, but it'll open it. Um, okay, more questions. Yeah. Oh, VLC? VLC? No, no, it's. Okay, then uh, it may have been already um, um, removed and the, the shortcut for it on your desktop is just a shortcut that um, is left over. It, it still opens the program? Yeah, I don't know what to do with it if it opens up the program. Okay, uh, let's have a look here. Under uh, Programs and Features, Programs and features. And there is VLC down at the bottom. Okay? 
it's uh, if you don't want to use a printer, that's fine. Just leave it there. But uh, it's not hurting anything. It's not getting in the way of anything. Um, just leave it there if it's if it's still there. Um, VLC, uh, video LAN client. It's VLC. Okay. It, it 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 plays it allows you to play videos on your computer that might not otherwise play um, like this one okay that is playing right now in the Windows 10 player, okay? I love that. I love that song. Yeah, but if I open the uh, VLC player, and I'm gonna open it right now, it's trying to open. And I'm just, then what I can do is I can simply take this shortcut and I can drag it over there. And it plays in VLC. Right into the screen of the VLC player. There, there is no difference in this case, but in some cases, Windows does not know how to play certain kinds of files. It may not play them, in the video player for your computer. So we give it another video player that is guaranteed to play everything, and that's VLC. No, no, that's something you have to download and install. All right? Okay, last question, please. Okay, now the Windows 8.1. Yes. No. So, uh, is it safe to go to Windows 10? Yes. Yes. You may go to Windows 10. Ron, did you load Windows 10? It's in Windows 10. Beautiful. Okay, I know that Windows updates. I have not had a Windows update installed since August the 4th. It was the last one. It keeps endlessly looping and searching for updates. Yeah. So I go to 10, do you think that will solve it? Yes, it will. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, we've reached our time. It's two o'clock. Thank you so much, and I'll get this video out as quickly as I can. Thank you. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.